Hello everyone and welcome to another Foul Original. This video was made in part thanks to the Foul Original people over on patreon.com slash Foul Original. Patreons get early access to all my videos ad-free before they go public on YouTube. More details will be at the end of the video. This week, we look at the fallout of the wedding of Bully Ray and Brooke Hogan from the Aces and Eight storyline in January 2013. Taz would shock the world by revealing himself to be a member of the Aces and Eights and serving up the wedding party to the biker gang. This new member would go on to add another layer to the mystery with his explanation of a higher power as well as raising the ire of his former friend. Two men who fought shoulder to shoulder alongside an Olympic hero would finally show their true colours and turn while another long-time TNA mainstay would reveal his allegiance to the Low Down group. This is part six of the story of the Aces and Eights, The Turn of Taz. The shocking reveal of Taz as a member of the Aces and Eights would be one of the final memories from Brooke Hogan and Bully Ray's wedding. Taz started his commentary career in the WWF WWE after ending his active wrestling career in 2002. Having had the dual role of wrestler and commentator, he would settle into a full-time commentary role. He worked alongside Michael Cole on SmackDown between 2002 and 2006. He quit SmackDown in storyline to join the new WWE ECW brand headed up by Paul Heyman. Here, he worked alongside Joey Styles until he returned to SmackDown in April 2009. He would then leave the company just before WrestleMania 25 in Houston, Texas. He would go on to say on his podcast, The Taz Show, episode 622 in October 2018, about him leaving the WWE in 2009. I left. And I Maybe left that's how? Why. Um, uh, on my terms. On your terms. And if I remember right, you even offered to work WrestleMania for free while I you did. were leaving. That's exactly right. Because my contract was up the week going into WrestleMania. I don't know whatever number that was. There. I wasn't there. That was it. No, I was done. I was done. The Dallas TV before that, it was me and JR calling. Smackdown? I don't remember what we were calling, but it was in Dallas. That was my last TV. And I, I gave officially gave notice to Vince. He knew I was going to give notice because Kev, I gave Kevin Dunn notice three weeks prior. And they were trying to get me to stay. Like they, they were like, is it money? Is that? No, it's not money. I, they offered me a new deal, which was a great deal. It, it was nothing like that. I just I needed a fresh coat of paint. I had to get out of there. He would then go on to join TNA and debut at the Victory Road pay-per-view on July 17th, 2009. In October 2009, he would go on to replace Don West on commentary full-time, turning face. During this time in TNA, he had been a fixture as an announcer alongside Mike Tanay. At this time, he was in a three-man commentary team with Mike Tanay and Todd Kenley. Taz had also been a part of the ongoing TNA gut check as a judge, alongside part of the real TNA talent relations and management team, including Bruce Pritchard, Al Snow, and D'Lo Brown. The Gut Check was a part real, part story-based competition which happened sporadically on episodes of Impact between April 2012 and July 2013 for a chance at a TNA contract. They would be judged on a few different factors, such as their matches, promos, and an online vote. Finally, it would go to a judge's decision by Taz and the others, with the wrestler needing two out of three yeses from these judges to get a contract. Fast forward to the January 24th, 2013 episode, during a Championship Thursday edition of Impact Wrestling, the man Taz would give us his explanation. We would open the show with some extra footage from the aftermath of the wedding last week, which aired on the TNA post show. The three-man commentary team was now just down to two. Taz's chair would be empty as Todd Kenley recapped last week and Mike Tanay looked incensed. Mike speaking to camera would say to Taz, I can't wait to hear what you have to say. A few minutes later, the Aces and Eights would enter the arena with Taz leading the charge. He was now dressed in the Aces and Eights leather jacket with a plaid shirt, wool cap, and his trademark shades. As the biker gang stood in the ring behind him, backing him up, he would grab a mic and give us his reasons for joining. He would say that people have been asking him why he joined and that life is about opportunity and how could he not be part of a group looking to get revenge and redemption? He asked the question, how can I not take the opportunity to take direction and to live by the vision of a higher power? 
He closes out the segment by telling everyone in the back office, especially TNA president Dixie Carter and Hulk Hogan, that his contract from years ago basically says if anyone touches him that he will own the company. He calls himself Teflon Taz and warns everyone about the path of rage coming from the rest of the gang. Later that night, Bully Ray and Brooke Hogan would make their way to the ring to address the wedding from last week. Bully would look to the commentary table from the entrance ramp to speak to Taz, but he wasn't there. Mike Tanay would say that Taz said he had to take a phone call and would be back later. Bully and Brooke would continue to the ring and he would grab a mic to tell the Aces and Eights that they ruined their biggest day. He tells every member of the gang, including Devon and Taz, to sleep with one eye open. Bully says he knew Hulk was at home resting, but knew he would be watching. Bully would plead with Hulk to lift the suspension and reinstate him as an active competitor on the roster. Sting would come out to the ring and grab a mic to plead Bully's case to Hulk at home, backing him up. Sting says that next week when they are in the UK, he believes that Hulk will do the right thing and reinstate Bully Ray. On this same episode of Impact, Kurt Angle would enter the ring to call out a member of the Aces and Eights for next week's open fight night from the UK. He speaks to Taz about revenge and calls out Mr. Anderson. Anderson comes out and says he doesn't want to fight next week, but wants to fight now, and gets in a cheap shot on Angle. Angle would quickly turn the tide and Anderson would roll out the ring to escape. Angle would get on the mic to let Anderson know that next week he will be facing him one-on-one -on -one in a steel cage. Before the night was over, the Aces and Eights would give a final parting shot to the TNA roster. In the main event, TNA World Heavyweight Champion Jeff Hardy would face off against Christopher Daniels. Hardy would come out the victor in his title defense and celebrate it in the ring. Taz would grab a mic and get up from the commentary table and start speaking to Jeff Hardy from the entrance ramp. While he was distracted in the ring, the still-masked vice president of the Aces and Eights would enter the ring unnoticed. Lunging forwards, he hit Jeff with a ball-peen hammer on the back of his left leg. Jeff would fall to the floor, screaming in pain, as Taz jokingly said, I meant to tell you to watch your back. Taz would make his way back up the ramp, as Mike Tanay knew this was a setup from the Aces and Eights and his co-commentator Taz, as we ended the show with Jeff in pain. The Aces and Eights were slowly gaining in numbers as more wrestlers would reveal themselves to be members. Angle and Joe had been attacked backstage many times in the past, but Angle didn't seem to know why they were targeting him. Throughout this time, Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff had stood side by side with him and Joe against the Aces and Eights. He knew he could rely on them to always have his back. On the open fight night edition of Impact on January 31st, 2013, Angle would meet Mr. Anderson in a steel cage match in the main event. Just before the match was happening, backstage, Samoa Joe had been attacked by someone and was on the ground, knocked out. Briscoe and Bischoff tell Angle they didn't know who did this. However, knowing his match is next, Angle starts directing traffic. He asks Garrett to stay with Joe and call the paramedics and for Wes to come out with him. In the main event, Mr. Anderson would come out to the ring alone as Angle was accompanied by Wes Briscoe. Both men entered and Wes would lock up the steel cage door to get the match started. Angle would fight Anderson in the steel cage as Wes Briscoe watched at ringside. Kurt Angle would win this match defeating Anderson and making him submit to an ankle lock. He had finally managed to get some revenge against the biker gang, especially Mr. Anderson. Once the match had ended, a masked member of the Aces and Eights climbed the locked cage from the outside to make his way in. At the same time, Wes Briscoe would quickly unlock the door and get in there to help. He would lock the cage door behind himself and stand side to side with Angle to corner the masked man. The man would take off his own mask to reveal himself as Garrett Bischoff, as Angle looked on in disbelief. He started to argue with Briscoe, asking if he knew. Briscoe would deny it, and Angle would go to attack Bischoff in the corner. As he did, Wes Briscoe would hit Angle from behind, to the back of the leg, knocking him down. As Kurt lay on the ground, Briscoe would take off his suit jacket, untie his hair, and let it down. Underneath, he was wearing an Aces and Eights leather vest. He'd joined the biker gang too. 
Taz was again overjoyed on commentary as the two men continued the beatdown on their former mentor. They posed in the ring victorious as the Aces and Eights had shown they were everywhere in TNA and no one could be trusted. The Open Fight Night episode of TNA Impact on January 31st, 2013 would be in the UK. This was during a UK tour for the promotion, and tonight was in Manchester Arena in Manchester, England. Magnus would return to interrupt a segment with Christopher Daniels and Frankie Kazarian of Bad Influence, mocking the UK crowd. He beat them down and they fled the ring. Magnus wanted to speak to the UK fans and let everyone know he was out for revenge after his beatdown by the Aces and Eights on the November 15th, 2012 episode of Impact. This beatdown had written him off TV and he was now ready to fight back. He called out Devon to face him in a one-on-one -on -one match and the two would meet in the ring. The match would see them brawling outside the ring and playing as close to the edge of the rules as possible. The match would end when Magnus would hit Devon with a sit-out pile driver, looking to have it won. The Aces and Eights would interfere and cause the referee to ring the bell to throw the match out. Doc would come through the crowd and jump on the apron to distract Magnus, who would see him and punch him down to the mat. Then Knox would try to sneak into the ring from behind him, but Magnus had it scouted and threw him over the top rope. Doc, Knox and Devon would make their way out of the arena as Magnus stood tall getting his pound of flesh that night. On that same night, we would hear from Hulk Hogan, who would finally lift his suspension and reinstate Bully Ray onto the active TNA roster. Hogan would make a match for next week's Impact. It would be a tables tag match with Bully Ray and Sting teaming up against Devon and Doc. Skipping ahead to the February 7th, 2013 episode of Impact, Garrett Bischoff would explain why he joined the Aces and Eights. He said he gets no respect from the fans and that he joined them after Hulk Hogan disrespected him. Wes Briscoe would say that he was also disrespected by Hulk as he had to start at the bottom and he was a Briscoe, so he shouldn't have to. The director of Chaos, Devon, would then get on the mic to warn Kurt Angle that the Aces and Eights would end his career. Later that same night, the now reinstated Bully Ray and Sting would meet Devon and Doc in the main event in the tables tag match made by Hogan the previous week. The end of the match would see Bully Ray put Devon through a table for them to pick up the win. Bully Ray had finally got some payback on the Aces and Eights after all this time. The February 14th, 2013 episode of Impact would be taped on the 26th of January, 2013, as part of the TNA Impact tour and tapings happening in the UK. On this episode, taped at Wembley Arena in London, England, Hulk Hogan would run down some of the matches for that night in his role as general manager. He would say that there would be a series of matches tonight called Impress Hulk Hogan Matches to pick a number one contender to face Jeff Hardy at the lockdown pay-per-view on March 10th, 2013. He had picked eight of the best in the back to face each other tonight. He would be listening to the crowd and watching all the matches before making a decision at the end of the show. Hogan then moved on to other business. He said that the Aces and Eights had called out the whole TNA roster and they want a war at lockdown. Hogan told the crowd he had called Sting on the phone to make him the captain of Team TNA earlier. Sting would then make his way down to the ring. Taz would note on commentary that none of the Aces and Eights were involved in the matches made by Hogan. He would call BS on the whole thing as he continued his role as the voice of the Aces and Eights on commentary. Sting would get on the mic and accept the challenge for lockdown and said he would get those scumbags in the Aces and Eights. He would need to find three killers to join the team and to end the group. He would finish by saying, what you gonna do when the Stinger runs wild on you? The UK crowd ate it up, but Taz would say, oh real original Sting, well done. Pretty unhappy with the whole situation. First off in the series of matches, we saw Christopher Daniels accompanied to the ring by Kazarian. He would face Magnus in the first Impress Hulk Hogan match. Magnus would win this match, even after a distraction interference from Kazarian. After this match, we would get a quick segment with Brooke Hogan and Bully Ray who were backstage talking. Bully was down about being injured and missing out on being in one of the Impress Hogan matches. He said that his two goals were marrying Brooke and winning the TNA world title. She would try to console him by saying she feels so bad for him. 
Bully then says they are buying Brooke some new clothes, going out to eat and going dancing later since it's Valentine's Day. With that, both seem to be much happier. Brooke says that Bully needed to be careful though and make sure he wore his wedding ring. She remarks that she found the ring on the bathroom sink after Ray left before. Next up, we had Kurt Angle face Samoa Joe in an Impress Hulk Hogan match. On commentary, Taz would continue to give his heel opinions on the match. He said that he hated Angle and that the Aces and Eights really enjoy watching these two guys beat each other up. The match saw both men evenly matched, with both close to picking up the win via submission. The match would end when they both go for a flying clothesline and knock each other to the mat. Out of nowhere, Wes Briscoe and Garrett Bischoff of the Aces and Eights would hit the ring to interfere. Angle and Joe would fight, but the ref would call for a double DQ and the match to end as a no contest. The next Impress Hulk Hogan match was a non-title match between current TNA X Division champion Rob Van Dam and his opponent James Storm. The match was short, but both men were able to get in some impressive offense. The match would end when James Storm picked up the win with a last call kick. After this match, we would have a backstage segment in Hulk Hogan's office with Brooke Hogan talking about title shots. She would plead with her father to give Bully Ray a TNA title shot as she knows he got into the business because of Hulk and would one day like to be just like him. She tells him to soften up a little as Bully is family. Conflicted, Hulk would say that he would love to have a son-in-law as the world heavyweight champion but that he has to remain objective in his decision. He tells her he will think about what she said but he has to consider the other eight guys. The main event of the February 14th episode of Impact would see the current TNA Tag Team Champions Bobby Roode and Austin Aries face off in the final Impress Hulk Hogan match. The two had become friends after Jeff Hardy beat them in a triple threat TNA Heavyweight Championship match back at the TNA Genesis pay-per-view on January 13th, 2013. They would team up to challenge for the TNA World Tag Team Championship against then champions Chavo Guerrero Jr. and Hernandez. This took place on January 25th, 2013 as part of the taping for the February 7th episode of Impact Wrestling from Manchester, England during their tour. As the main event kicked off, Bobby Roode and Austin Aries would make their way down to the ring. Before the match could start, Roode and Aries would grab a mic and say that this match was ruining their plan and they were going to take care of it. The match would almost end after the ref was knocked down and both men went for the vintage Eddie Guerrero spot of slamming the chair on the ground and dropping to the floor when the ref gets up. The former TNA tag champs, Chavo Guerrero and Hernandez, appeared at the top of the entrance ramp to distract them. The distraction would cause Aries and Rude to leave the ring to argue with and miss the referee's 10 count leading to a double count out. Just before the end of the episode, Hulk Hogan would come out to the ring to announce his decision on the new number one contender for the TNA World Heavyweight Championship at the lockdown pay-per-view. Before he could give a name, the Aces and Eights would come through the crowd and over the guardrail to surround Hulk in the ring. They slowly started to climb onto the ring apron, but were stopped when Bully Ray, still injured, gingerly made his way to the ring. He had his metal chain and was ready to attack. He joined Hogan in the ring, helping to even up the numbers a little bit. The Aces and Eights would drop down from the ring apron, signaling that they weren't going to attack them for now. On commentary, Taz would say that Bully Ray got lucky tonight, but then Sting's music would play. Sting had three baseball bats in hand and made his way down to the entrance ramp. Taz was having an absolute meltdown on commentary on seeing the icon hand these bats out to Hogan and Bully. Devon would tell the rest of the Aces and Eights to make their way out of the arena. Bully Ray would point at Devon as this episode of Impact ended without their number one contender even announced. The next week on the February 21st, 2013 live episode of Impact from Wembley Arena in London, England, we would open the show with Hulk ready to let us know his decision in the ring. He says that he's had a week to think it over and that of all the guys that gave their heart and soul last week, he had picked a winner. He would announce that his choice was Bully Ray. Commentary are a little confused as Bully Ray's music hits and still limping slightly, he starts to make his way to the ring. Taz calls the decision a load of malarkey and bull as Bully hadn't even competed in any of the matches. He says he's still hurt from his previous matches with the Aces and Eights, 
but Hogan would counter this, saying he's one of the toughest SOBs they got. Bully would tell Hulk, all I ever wanted was to make you proud and the greatest day of my life was when I married your daughter. He would then go on to say that he would love to be a world champion like Hulk. He then asks Hogan as general manager to set up a match in the main event as they have other business to take care of first. He suggests a six man tag match against the biker gang. On one side, three members of the Aces and Eights. On the other side, Uli Ray, Sting and Hulk Hogan. Uli would say, what do you say, dad? What do you say we kick some aces and eights ass, brother? Hogan would shake his hand in the ring and accept as they walked back up the entrance ramp. Taz would be vocal on commentary again as the voice of the gang saying, they didn't sign up for this, as we faded out. Ahead of the match, we would see Bully, Sting and Hogan getting ready. Sting would remark that they can end this just before lockdown. Hulk would speak to Brooke just before the match, saying that he and his family have been humiliated by the Aces and Eights and that he has to do this. She tells him to be careful as he makes his way out to the ring. Tonight, in the main event, in a six-man tag team match representing Aces and Eights, we would have Mr. Anderson, Doc and Devon make their way to the ring to await their opponents. Bully, Ray and Sting would make their way to the ring first, awaiting their tag team partner. His music hits and commentary build up his return, as Taz seems to think Hogan is not coming. Hulk's music continues to play until the music ends and starts up again. For some reason, Hogan hasn't turned up, and the three-on-three -three tag match becomes a three-on-two handicap match, as the Aces and Eights start to beat up Bully and Sting with a numbers advantage. The match almost ends after Sting and Bully manage to fight back, and Sting hits a scorpion death drop on Doc, but it's broken up by Mr. Anderson to keep the match alive. Sting would reverse a scoop slam by Anderson and set up for the old Team 3D was up, with the match clearly now going their way. Bully Ray would climb the top turnbuckle to go aerial when there would be commotion upon the entrance ramp. A smiling Garrett Bischoff and a still masked vice president of the Aces and Eights bring a propped up and beaten down Hulk Hogan to the entrance ramp. His shirt is ripped and torn as they hold him up and he cries out in pain. We then see Brooke Hogan being brought down to the entrance way past him by Wes Briscoe and Knox. She hasn't been beaten up but she seems terrified as they drag her down the rampway. Bully Ray sees this and tells Sting as he gets down from the top rope and tries to go after them. He's still limping on one leg to chase as he's not 100%. The Aces and Eights flee, leaving both Brooke and Hulk on the floor. Hulk complains about his knee as Bully stays to take care of them. In the ring, Sting would continue the match on his own, putting Anderson in a scorpion deathlock, but would eat a big boot from the director of chaos. Doc would pin Sting and get the win for the bike gang. Sting would get a beat down from the Aces and Eights as more members enter the ring to close out the show. On commentary, Tanay would say it's obvious now that Hogan had been attacked by the gang before the match. Taz wouldn't seem to agree but says it's a good day to be a bad guy as we close out the show with the Aces and Eights triumphant in London. The constant attacks by the Aces and Eights over the past nine months had led to them making many enemies in TNA. On the February 28th, 2013 episode of Impact, the Aces and Eights would get in the ring to ask some questions. The Sergeant at Arms Devon and four other members would call out Sting. They wanted him to name his teammates for the upcoming lethal lockdown match at the upcoming lockdown 2013 pay-per-view. Sting would answer and make the match a five on five lethal lockdown against the biker gang. Aces and Eights would be represented by Doc, Knox, Mr. Anderson, Garrett Bischoff and Devon. One by one, Sting would name his killer team as they joined him on the entranceway. Samoa Joe, Magnus and James Storm. All had been previously targeted by the Aces and Eights one way or another. The gang would ask who the fifth member was as Sting repeated, it's showtime. As he says this, Showtime Eric Young manages to sneak into the ring behind them and starts to attack them. The rest of Team TNA rush the ring to help them as they brawl to end the segment. The teams were now set for the lethal lockdown match and it looked like TNA may now have a chance at taking them out for good. In a backstage segment on that same night, we would see Kurt Angle and a camera crew spying on the Aces and Eights. He tells the cameraman, let's go, as they follow the biker gang from a distance. Just before the end of the night, we would again see Kurt Angle, 
to reveal he had followed them back to the hidden Aces and Eights clubhouse. On commentary, Taz is livid with Angle. Kurt would start to beat up Anderson, Devon, and make his way to meet the still-masked vice president. They brawl until Angle smashes a beer bottle over the VP's head. Angle would unmask this man on the ground out of camera shot and couldn't believe who it was, shouting, how could you? Angry and hurt with this reveal. Before he could say the name and reveal them to us, other members of the Aces and Eights caught Angle from behind and beat him down to close out the show. Taz was overjoyed with this as the VP remained unnamed. The next week on the March 7th, 2013 episode of Impact, after a recap of last week's invasion of the clubhouse by Angle, we would see him still clutching the mask of the VP. Commentary would let us know he was coming to the ring next. Before Angle would arrive, Wes Briscoe would come out to the ring on his own with a mic to insult Angle. Kurt would come to the ring having enough of this as he held the mask high in the air. He came down to let Briscoe know he was disappointed in the snot-nosed kid he once knew. He said he would beat him within an inch of his life at lockdown as they were scheduled to have a one-on-one -on -one cage match. He promised that he was about to expose who the VP was to the world, but before that, he was going to whip his ass tonight. As they brawled in the ring, TNA backstage officials would come down to try to separate and break them up. Al Snow and Simon Dean would hold back Angle, while D'Lo held back Briscoe in the other corner. While being held back from each other, Kurt would point and shout at TNA official D'Lo Brown, shouting, it's him, at the other TNA management. Angle would break free to charge at him, but D'Lo would respond by stopping him in his tracks with a kick to the balls. As Taz laughs on commentary, Briscoe and D'Lo knock down the other backstage officials to leave them in the ring. D'Lo stands over Angle and retrieves his mask, leaving the ring with Briscoe and grabbing a mic. At ringside, D'Lo says, I'm going to spoil your big surprise. D'Lo Brown is the VP of the Aces and Eights, now recognize. This may have felt like the biggest reveal in the Aces and Eights storied past and would lead to ripple effects throughout the club. Lockdown 2013 would see the biggest reveal of all and one that would change the complexion of TNA for months to come. But that's all we have for this time. Quick question, were you shocked by the reveal of the longtime TNA wrestlers, especially D'Lo, being members? Join us next time for the Aces and Eights Part 7, The Lockdown 2013 Betrayal. This video was first available to all my Patreons 24 hours before it went live on YouTube ad-free. A special thank you to all my current Patreons, their names will be on the screen right now. If you would like to support this video and future series, then please go to patreon.com slash fouloriginal and become a fop. Tiers start from $1 and they go towards getting more of these out to you. Like the video if you did, subscribe if you would, hit the bell notification if you please, and share this video if you can. This has been a Foul Original. Thanks for watching. See you next time.